hackers taunting people through their ring security camera at home. Hello, hello, hello. Somebody who shouldn't be there on our camera trying to speak to us. Ring security systems. Should you put their cameras around your home? Ring is a company that's owned by Amazon and they first came onto the market as a smart doorbell. Hi there, what can I do for you? They've since evolved into one of the most popular home surveillance companies offering all kinds of smart security devices including indoor cameras, outdoor cameras, motion sensors, carbon monoxide detectors and everything else you can imagine. It's a camera that flies. They're consumer grade surveillance tools that people can set up easily themselves. And it's thanks to cameras like these that we now have an internet filled with delightful videos of curious animals <coughs> and ridiculous drunken escapades. <laughs> The reason these cameras are able to capture so much viral content is because they are always watching from the moment you set them up. If you're going to have a camera recording every person coming and going to your house, monitoring you inside your home, or even recording audio of you, whether you're in frame or not, you're going to want to know that this footage is private and secure. In this video, we're going to dive into Ring and whether or not you should use them for your home. Here are four concerns that you should consider if you're thinking of installing a Ring doorbell or other surveillance equipment in your home. So let's start off by diving right into some concerns. It is no secret that Ring has a long history of privacy scandals. An elderly woman was harassed with death threats through her camera in her care facility. A family in Tennessee sued Amazon after a hacker started talking to their eight-year-old daughter through a ring camera in her room. I'm Santa Claus. Don't you want to be my best friend? These hacks may have been partly due to bad password practices of the users. Basically, if you have a super simple password protecting your account, then it's possible someone might be able to break into it and get access to your footage. But the privacy concerns of Ring actually go far beyond that. For one, they send a huge amount of data to third parties. Apps like AppFlyer receive data from the sensors installed on your device, like your magnetometer, gyroscope, accelerometer, and current calibration settings. Apps like Mixpanel get users' full names, email addresses, the number of locations a user has Ring devices installed, and device information such as OS version and model, where the Bluetooth is enabled, the app settings. Ring also shares data like unique identifiers, which allow these companies to track you across apps and provide real-time data showing how you interact with the apps on your phone. And they share information about your home network. In 2020, Ring did a big privacy overhaul where they said that they would temporarily pause some of that. I don't know where that ended up. As with most closed source companies, it's really difficult to know what they're actually doing with your data, who they're sending it to, even what they're sending most of the time. It seems most, if not all of these third party analytics plus more are still happening. But since then, Ring has at least added the ability for users to opt out. Whether or not this actually keeps your data private though is unclear. And Amazon doesn't have the best track record on this front. But one of the biggest concerns about Ring doorbells has to do with their relationship with law enforcement. Ring offers a free app called Neighbors, which is where members of the public can share information about local crime. And this app has more than 10 million monthly active users. Ring also has an analog app exclusively for law enforcement and public safety agencies called NPSS, which stands for Neighbors Public Safety Service, that allows law enforcement to easily request surveillance footage from users. It was reported by NYU's policing project that NPSS has about 2,000 law enforcement agencies signed up. In order to convince police departments to join the program, Amazon has aggressively pursued them and offered incentives like discounts for their products and free samples. And once in the program, the police departments are expected to then help recruit civilians to install these cameras. It doesn't seem like a huge deal because isn't helping law enforcement catch bad guys a good thing? Well, it's a bit murkier than that. There are police departments that offered free or discounted ring doorbells to citizens in order to get them signed up, which you can think of as tantamount to using taxpayer funds to create a surveillance network that citizens never got to vote on. But further, some giveaways were under the condition that the user had to turn over footage when requested. Amazon also provided coaching to law enforcement on how to talk to the public to get access to their footage. Keep in mind, these doorbell cameras aren't just recording 
owning a person's own property, they usually see right out past the public street and into the house opposite. The result is an incredibly dense surveillance network where law enforcement and one of the biggest tech companies in the world have created a partnership that has limited, if any, transparency or oversight. Police get access to a widespread surveillance apparatus and Amazon gets a big boost in sales. Now, some journalists have run with headlines that say that this partnership represents the warrantless surveillance of tens of millions of people. It's not quite like that. Ring maintains that they don't give law enforcement unfettered access to video footage. But even if you can trust that, they do hand it over in what they call emergencies. Amazon admitting it gave footage from Ring doorbell cameras to law enforcement nearly a dozen times this year without the consent of users. There are a couple of reasons why this is problematic. First, what constitutes an emergency isn't clearly defined. And as Matthew Guarilla from EFF said, both Amazon and the police don't have a great reputation when it comes to deciding when it's appropriate to acquire a person's data. Second, these emergency requests have a history of being abused by hackers. An emergency data request, or EDR, does not require the requester to supply any court-approved documents like a warrant. Tech companies will comply because they're told that it's a life and death situation where the requested data is needed immediately. Hackers have been known to compromise the email or website tied to a police department or government agency and send unauthorized demands for data, and tech companies often comply. So to sum up, these partnerships leave much to be desired. EFF has been very vocal against them, saying that they expand the web of government surveillance of public places, they purposely breed paranoia, and they deny citizens the transparency necessary to ensure accountability and create regulations. There's also the cultural shift towards pervasive surveillance that needs to be addressed. Residential streets aren't usually lined with security cameras, and police are now actively encouraging people to install this surveillance equipment and considering them tools to be used in investigations. There is a potential risk risk to civil liberties that needs to be considered here, as flagging of suspicious activity may lead to the increased surveillance of innocent people. Now, a simple way to fix this whole issue would be if Ring just end-to-end -end encrypted all their footage. And they did take small steps towards this in their 2021 privacy overhaul. For a long time, all footage stored in Ring servers was accessible to Ring employees. But last year, they released opt-in end-to-end encryption for a subset of their devices, which gives some people the ability to take their footage out of the reach of Ring. If you opt into this service, the footage is encrypted on a user's device before being sent to the cloud, and this also prevents the footage from being taken by hackers or anyone else directly from Ring databases. Unfortunately, Ring has declined to turn this on by default for all users, and instead are relying on the average user understanding what end-to-end -end encryption is, why it's important, and choosing to use it. Ring argues that protecting everyone's footage automatically in this way would be inconvenient for users, because it would disable certain features. I'm sure if the desire were there, they could create a product that both has those features enabled and is privacy preserving. Ring also rejected the request of US Senator Ed Markey to turn off audio capture on video doorbells by default. The senator observed that these devices record conversations well beyond the front door of its over 10 million users, including people walking down the public street 30 feet away, and that this puts the right to assemble, move, and converse without being tracked at risk. Ring has opted to keep audio recording on by default instead. At the end of the day, Ring is moving in the right direction with privacy, with end-to-end -end encryption, but Amazon isn't a company that I trust enough to put their cameras and microphones throughout my home. If you do insist on using a Ring device, you should do the following to enhance the privacy and security of your account. First, create a super strong, unique password to protect your account. Next, secure your account with 2FA. Ring recently made two-factor authentication mandatory, which is a great great first step to bolstering account security. Unfortunately, the only 2FA options they allow are SMS, which is the least secure of all 2FA, or email, which isn't great either. Turn on end-to-end -end encryption. It will decrease some functionality on your device, but if you're putting personal footage from your household online, you should take the uttermost care to protect it. Turn off recording audio by default on your doorbell so that conversations within 30 feet are not able to be captured, and opt out of third-party analytics. There's still a huge amount of trust that you're placing in 
Elden Ring by using their devices. And as well as not providing robust ways for users to protect their accounts, they have a bad track record with protecting users' privacy. But to be honest, most other home camera options on the market aren't great either, and don't even offer end-to-end -end encryption for your footage at all. In an upcoming video, we're going to dive into some of these other home camera alternatives. While it's disappointing that privacy and security don't seem to be at the forefront for most companies, there are some suggestions that we'll make. Home surveillance cameras are increasingly popular, so if you're going to use them, then you should do so in the most secure and private way possible. 